All right, if you haven't read Isaiah chapter 36, I strongly recommend that you do before you read uh, what we're going to cover here in Isaiah chapter 37, because it's a, it is a continuation. And the book of Kings and the book of Chronicles and I believe Jeremiah are parallel, have some parallel accounts to what is happening uh, here. So turn to Isaiah chapter 37. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Verse 1. And it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. You see, the king of the messenger for the king of Assyria had basically said that the God of Jerusalem was not going to be able to stop them from taking Jerusalem. That's basically what he was saying in a nutshell. If you know, if you don't want to read the whole, listen to the uh, chapter 36 study. But uh, so. And it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, and Shebna the scribe and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth unto Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. So here it is. This is Isaiah, and we're reading Isaiah's book. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble, and of rebuke, and of blasphemy. For the children are come to the birth, and there is not enough strength to bring forth. So they're comparing this like a woman is in labor with a child, but she has, doesn't have the strength to, to bring the child to birth. So what happens? They both die. And that's, that's their analogy here. Verse 4. It may be the Lord thy God will hear the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria his master hath sent to reproach the living God, and will reprove the words which the Lord thy God hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that is left. See, the king of Assyria had taken most of Judah, or a lot of Judah, I'm not sure exactly how much, but basically Jerusalem was, the capital was about it. So he says, Wherefore lift up my prayer for the remnant that is left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say unto your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard, wherewith the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. So Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he had heard that he had departed from Lachish. And he heard say concerning Turhakan, king of Ethiopia, He has come forth to make war with thee. And when he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God, in whom thou trustest, deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands, by destroying them utterly. And shalt thou be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed, as Gozan and Haran and Rezeph and the children of Eden, which were in Telassar? Where is the king of Hamath and the king of Arphad and the king of the city of Sepharv Sepharvaim? Hena and Iva. And Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up 
unto the house of the Lord, and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord, saying, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, that dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Incline thy ear, O Lord, and hear. Open thine eyes, O Lord, and see, and hear all the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their countries, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord, even thou only. Then Isaiah the son of Amos sent unto Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Whereas thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria. This is the word which the Lord hath spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, hath despised thee, and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken her head at thee. Whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed? Yeah. The, the people of Jerusalem and Judah were the one that reproached and blasphemed the Lord. Assyria was being used as a rod of judgment and correction against Israel and Judah. Assyria was basically the uh, the paddle at the principal's office at school when you know the students were misbehaving. Whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed? And against whom hast thou exalted thy voice and lifted up thine eyes on high, even against the Holy One of Israel? Israel. By thy servants hast thou reproached the Lord, and hast said, By the multitude of my chariots am I come up to the to the height of the mountains, to the sides of Lebanon, and I will cut down the tall cedars thereof, and the choice fir trees thereof, and I will enter into the height of this border, and the forest of his Carmel. I have digged and drunk water, and with the sole of my foot have I dried up all the rivers of the besieged places. Hast thou not heard long ago how I have done it, and of ancient times that I have formed it? Now have I brought it to pass that thou shouldest be to laid waste defensive cities into ruinous heaps. Therefore their inhabitants were of small power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field and as the green herb as the grass on the housetops, and as corn blasted before it be grown up. But I know thy abode, and thy going out, and thy coming in, and thy rage against me. Because thy rage against me, and thy tumult, is come up into mine ears. Therefore will I put my hook in thy nose, and my bridle in thy lips, and I will turn thee back by the way by which... Thou comest, camest, and this shall be a sign unto thee. Ye shall eat this year such as groweth of itself, and the second year which thou springest of the same, and the third year sow ye, and reap, and plant vineyards, and eat the fruit thereof. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. Have you ever heard of uh, people moving and saying, we're going to put down roots? Well, guess what? I think part of Judah went to uh, Europe. They put down roots. And for a time, they, they bore fruit. I mean, let's face it, the printing press, printed Bibles. You know, I... A pastor that I greatly respect, years ago when the internet just started becoming used and popular, he uh, made a comment to me, something along the lines, well, you know, 
the internet. Uh, it's basically porn and gambling. And I was like, yeah, those are the two most popular things on the internet. But I kind of reminded him, I was like, well, you know, paper. What can you do with paper? You could either print play, Playboys or you could print the Bible. I don't see much of a difference. And um, he is now on the internet. Limited, but he's on the internet now, which I'm glad to see it. But uh, he's kind of keeping it low key because knows that uh, a lot of time and effort goes into building a, an internet presence and uh, YouTube can just a couple of clicks of a button and next thing you know years of hard work are gone so verse 31 and the remnant that has escaped to the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward for out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant and they that escape out of Mount Zion the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city. He shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shields, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into the city, saith the Lord. For I will defend the city to save it for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. Okay, here we go. Then the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and fourscore and five thousand. That's 185,000 men. That is one large army, people. Can you imagine having to make meals for that many people? That's a lot of food, people. And smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and eighty-five, uh, well, a hundred and four score and five thousand. And when they rose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. And it came to pass, as he was worshiping in the house of Nishrosh, his god, that Adramelech and Sharrazer, his son, smote him with the sword. And they escaped in the land of Armenia, and Esar Hadon, his son, reigned in his stead. Now I remember when I read that, that was part of the, uh, the Angel series that I did not too long ago. All right, well, that's the end of Isaiah chapter 37. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name. Amen.